Hi everyone, welcome to a godly home. So I'm going to start this video by showing you what I'm having for my brunch today. And I always eat one meal in between breakfast and lunch and then I eat supper. So I have boiled an egg for three minutes and this is a three minute boiled egg. This was a medium egg. Go a minute longer if it's a large egg. And I am going to take this out of the shell. I've cut right down through the egg with the shell on, you can see. And now I'm just going to take my knife and just run it right around there and pop that egg out. Okay, now I'm going to just chop this up a little bit. Okay, and then last night I made this southern gravy. I don't know what it's called because I'm not southern. But my viewer, Becky, got me making this gravy. And it's butter and flour and a lot of salt and pepper and then um, milk. And I'm going to put that right over my egg. And then, while my toast is cooking, I have some homemade applesauce here. And I'm going to go ahead and put some of that. I save these little cups, you know, that fruit comes in, and we use them for condiments or if we want a side dish with our meal. There is my homemade chunky applesauce. I did not get to video this, but I just peeled the apples took them off the core. For two bags of apples, I used a third of a cup of sugar and a splash of vanilla and then um, just cooked it on the stove and till it was cooked down a little bit. And I like it slightly chunky, so I don't do a lot of mashing of it. Okay, my toast is done. I've got some of this challenge butter. Put a little bit of that on there. Okay, and then we might as well put a little gravy over that toast, too. Why not? Might as well use the rest of this up. If you're Southern, you can tell me if you've ever done this or if I'm doing this right. Okay, guys, there's my breakfast or brunch. Okay, so as you can see here, my table is full of things that have got to be tended to. And the first thing is this dehydrator full of zucchini. 
So I have had more zucchini on my hands than I can handle these days. And I slice them up and put them in the dehydrator. Um, my dehydrator has just the one temperature and I put them in there overnight. And um, I did this last year and these work out great. I used them all winter in zucchini casserole and spaghetti sauce and um, soups and things like that. Just absolutely wonderful. Don't hesitate to um, dehydrate your zucchini if you have some extra. And same with the summer squash or yellow squash as some of you call it. So this is all I do to store my dehydrated vegetables is I either use a Parmesan cheese container that's been washed out or something similar or I just use a Ziploc bag and then I put the Ziploc bags into a tote to keep the mice and stuff out. I'm just going to mark the year. And um, what it is on here. I'm going to write squash because I'll be adding some uh, summer squash to this same bag. So, okay, there we go. I can't see what you're seeing, so hopefully you can see it all. I just wrote the year and what it is, and it's going to go right into the Ziploc. And then as I do more squash, I'll just keep putting it in the same Ziploc. I'm trying to give you a little broader view, which means that I can't see at all what you're seeing. So hopefully this works out good. Um, if you're wondering what I have for a dehydrator, I have the Presto dehydrator. It came with, I think, two trays, and then I added more trays to it. I kept ordering trays until I got eight, which is the max this will hold, which is just about right. And then I ordered the rubber mats here to keep stuff from falling down through. Sometimes I will have some whatever stick like that under the first try. So I use the dehydrated celery, onions, green peppers constantly. I'm always grabbing for those. And dehydrated potatoes are not bad either. Sorry, I had a little dog hair on my shirt I wanted to get rid of. Um, I like those for a quick lunchtime soup or something like that when I'm in a hurry. And if I have some potatoes that are trying to sprout on me, I will always peel them, cook them until they're fork tender, uh, peel them, dice them, cook them until they're fork tender, drain them, and then pop them in the dehydrator. And I've had no problem. People talk about with the potatoes, it's so precise, you can get where they're molding on the inside, and if you don't have a dehydrator that will do adjustable temperatures. I've had no problem with that. I just put them in here and I literally dehydrate them until they are rock hard and they look kind of clearish tan and they've been just fine. I have some that are over a year old and no problem with them. These zucchini look a little bit dark because I actually toasted them. I left them in there so long. That won't hurt it at all. I find um, you're better off to go a little drier than not enough because just the natural humidity in the air that gets back into this stuff is quite a bit. As you know from like your spice cabinet will be, you know, like me with my onion powder this summer has been all clumpy from moisture getting in. So those are the vegetables that I reach for the most often, but I have done a variety of vegetables. I got this dehydrator last summer, 
So if you're wondering about what I've got going, what I've tried, what I like, what I don't like, if there's a certain vegetable you're wondering about, then go ahead and drop me a message and we can talk about that. And I just find this stuff is so handy in the winter. I just love having the dehydrated stuff on hand. Oh, tomatoes. I should have said that. I did um, whole tomatoes that I sliced and dehydrated, and we loved those. We didn't buy tomatoes through the winter. We didn't like what the grocery store had for fresh tomatoes. They just tasted strange, not fresh, you know. Like they've been injected or just they had a weird taste. So we ate from those. Now we didn't like those to eat like on a BLT or something. We didn't like those rehydrated. We preferred them just crunchy. And we used them that way. But like if we had um, chop suey or um, spaghetti sauce or something and we wanted to put a few in, then we went ahead and did that that way too. Okay, now I have in this basket produce that has to be used immediately. I'm going to be dehydrating all, whoops, all of these zucchini and yellow squash. I'm just going to rinse them and slice them and put them right in there. Nothing fancy. I'm not going to leave the camera on for that. Um, but that is a project that I will be doing here very shortly. I have probably that many again in the fridge. Now, I have these squash that grew in my garden, and I think that they might be missed yellow squash that I didn't notice. But I also grew a variety of spaghetti squash and I'm not sure what I got going on here. If anybody knows, leave me a comment. If not, then I guess pretty soon I'll cut one open and see if it looks like a spaghetti squash or a summer squash. This is one of my spaghetti squash from last year that has been in food storage for an entire year. Now, it's still hard to the touch. I did put these in the sun until they were very tough skinned before I stored them. And I stored them in a cardboard box with a paper bag laid over the top. Sloopy, no. Don't be nudging at Mama's basket. No, we're not going to eat tomatoes yet. She loves tomatoes. So... I did get some of the scarring on the outside, but we have been eating these all summer. And when I cut this open, it is perfectly fine. It is perfectly fresh. It still tastes better than the one Sloopy. No. It still tastes better than the ones at the grocery store. So harden your squash off before you put them away. And I did put them in an unheated bedroom upstairs. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to be working on is cherry tomatoes. I have a colander and my biggest mixing bowl full. Some are green, some are red. If you have any ideas for using cherry tomatoes, let me know. I don't really like those dehydrated, um, and I need to pick through these today. But please let me know if you have any ideas other than fresh eating. This is a lot of cherry tomatoes to be eating fresh. Okay, so I will be putting any green tomatoes into this paper bag to ripen off just on the counter and I'll be keeping watch of them to make sure that they're getting pulled out. I also wondered, and you can leave a comment below, 
about taking some of those green ones and dunking them in batter and doing like a fried green tomato, but with the little cherry tomatoes. All right, next on my list. These were radish seed pods, and I actually picked them too soon. I didn't realize that I was supposed to leave these until they were fuller and um, brown. The seeds inside are very small and green still. But while I was researching like what to do with this, I found out these are edible. They can be pickled, stir fried, or eaten raw, and they are supposed to taste absolutely delicious. So I'm gonna go around to the other side of the camera and we'll give one of these a try. Oh my goodness, you guys, these are delicious. Wow, I like that better than the radish. The first bite tastes kind of sweet, but at the same time, it has that little bit of a radish taste, but a very mild radish taste. The end is kind of pointy. I'm not eating the end. I'm just kind of eating it down to here. Oh my goodness, these would be so good in salad or just to snack on plain. Wow. We learn something new every day. That is so interesting. Okay, and then also what I have going on. I have these runner bean seeds that need to fully dry out. I don't leave them outside. They seem to mold if I leave them outside. I bring them in when they're really full and I take them from the bean itself very gently. And then I just keep them rotated and in a place where they can be drying out without molding. Or I've also laid them on the dehydrator racks when the dehydrator is off, you know, just because there's good airflow for them to dry. I did this last year and grew my runner beans from them and it worked out great. I got a little bit of dill seed here that I didn't use that fully dried. I'll get that into an envelope and in with my seeds. And then in this basket, what's left at this point is tomatoes. And I'll probably do some macaroni and tomatoes because I got a lot of ripe ones in the fridge this weekend. I don't know if I'll get a chance to video that or not. And then, of course, the green ones need to go into the paper bag. So, everybody, how you like tomatoes? You want to show them how much you like tomatoes? You want to show them? Want to show them? You want to show them again? She loves tomatoes. If I don't get these off the table right away, she'll come up and she'll get her teeth on a stem like that and she'll grab a bunch and she'll go hide up underneath the living room table where she likes to stash her stuff and she'll have tomatoes under there that she can snack on later. Isn't that right, Slope? Do you do that? Slope, hey. You want another tomato? You want tomato? Come here, babes. You want tomato? You want to get tomato? You want more? You want another one? Can you guys see the drool flowing? Another tomato? 
She loves all kinds of vegetables. If you're wondering why I picked some of these cherry tomatoes before they were ripe, it's because we had a threat of frost on Sunday night, and I didn't want to leave all these out there. I figured I could ripen them off inside better than I could lose them, and of course we didn't have the frost, and they've been sitting here waiting for me to get to them, and um, now... I've got more out there that are ready to be picked again. So we're very, very, very blessed with a lot of good produce. I find that I don't like to wash these until right before we eat them. I get just however many we're going to eat and then I put them in the colander and rinse them and eat them right then because once I wash them and put them in the refrigerator, they start to turn mushy within 24 hours. Here's a bad one. So there's a little tip for you. Um, these were Matt's wild cherry tomatoes that's an heirloom variety and we had unbelievable luck with these this year we've never had this many cherry tomatoes this was from just three plants and we were picking them every week you know all that we could eat sloopy's been crying for tomatoes let's see if we can get her to do it in front of the camera. She's not much for in front of the camera. You crying? What's the matter? What do you want, babes? What do you want? You're sitting? You're sitting for it? Uh-oh. There goes one. Are you crying for tomatoes? Are you? You're sitting and crying? Poor thing. Let's give you one more. They gotta come here so they can see you in the camera and take it. There you go. So Sloopy slipped her collar last week and she ended up out in the road because our neighbors came through and she followed them out into the road and I took the pickup down there and mm -hmm. when she saw the pickup she just followed it home but she didn't like to didn't want to get in the pickup because she gets sick riding. But when we get home got home she didn't want to come inside and without a collar I really couldn't get a hold of her and get her inside. So I just left the doors open and let her be. But when I kept checking on her, she was sitting at the wild cherry plant, wild cherry tomato plant, eating all the tomatoes she could eat off the plant, just as happy as can be. And when she got done eating tomatoes, in she came to have a drink and to eat another snack. I had some um, caramel corn that my grandmother had sent, and she wanted some of that. Then she laid down on the couch and had a little nap, but that was that. Didn't have to worry about her running off as long as I had cherry tomatoes. 
Okay, I don't know if you can see down in there or not, but those are the green ones. I'm going to fold this bag over tight and leave it at room temperature. You want your tomatoes in the dark. They um, ripen best that way, and then you'll want to check it every day and pull out the ripe ones.